is up, everyone? How's it going? Sarah, awesome to see you. Uh, let me know if this microphone's working. I just turned it on. <coughs> what? Ooh. My wet palette is not so wet right now. I will be right back. I need to refresh my wet palette. While I wait for the white pellet to finish on doing its thing for a minute, let's take a look at the models that I've got for tonight. All right, so again, if you're new to watching, welcome, glad to have you. It's been, oh, it's been a minute since I streamed. I had some family in town have taken a break. I, I did paint a couple evenings. It was just some quick, quick paint jobs for um, models that I needed to get painted for my Gen Con tickets, because that's how I get my Gen Con tickets, is I paint for a guy and he gives me Game Master badges. So again, if, if you're going to be at Gen Con, I mentioned this in my other streams, I'd love to meet up with you. Shoot me a message through Facebook and we can surely figure something out. So what I've got here, pre-started my base. It's just a bit of cork with a a Kingdom Death Monster base right there. We are working on Manhunter. Um, he's one of the expansions for Kingdom Death. Bear with me as I get back to used to using cameras here. Um, one of the expansions for Kingdom Death Monster, a, a boutique board game that I thoroughly enjoy. Um, I've been looking forward to painting this guy for a while. Um, and then I've got him back in two pieces, so he'll have this gallows that hangs off of his shoulder with the rope, and um, he kind of is like a hangman. Yeah, I can't complain about the, the deal of painting, and I get tickets for me and a couple buddies, and so this year it's one of my buddies that went with me last year, and then my eight-year-old son, I'm taking him with me for the first time, so I am pretty stoked about that. 
So in my Kingdom Death models, I do a lot of cooler colors. Um, I want it to feel like it's a um, darker world. So what I've done to start this is I've done a Zenithal highlight. So black from underneath, gray from 45, and then a, a lighter white sparingly across the top. Um, but the highlights are going to be subdued just a little bit throughout this because, again, I, I want it to feel like it's a darker world. If you're familiar with the, the gameplay of it, the idea is that you are... Um, survivors that woke up in this unfamiliar unknown world so um, there's no sources of light anywhere except for the lanterns that <clears throat> the survivors carry and things like that so I've assembled this model I've done some um, mold line cleaning up and then I've taken some matte varnish and filled in some of the the lines where the model comes together so where you glue it together I use matte varnish if it's a small spot rather than liquid green stuff it works the same to me and matte varnish is cheaper and easier for me to get hold of so um, this guy's gonna be somewhat um, grotesque looking almost zombie color skin not fully green but I do tend to mix a little bit of a um, this hardened carapace color into my base paints just a touch so that it has a green tone to it. Um, I've done that with all of my Kingdom Death model miniatures that I've done that are humanoids. Um, some of the monsters that I've done I haven't, which I've not painted on stream. I didn't start streaming too after that, but I'm excited to get started with this guy. I'm thinking of a very dark blue cloak with uh, some, some very dark brown pants, probably down here, and... Um, We'll just go ahead and get started from there. So to begin with, we're going to take some oak brown. We'll give that a good shake because it's been a minute since I used my paints. I'm just picking up some of my tools that I've been using. I don't know if we'll get this guy finished tonight, so we may end up having to make this a two-part stream. Maybe stream again tomorrow night um, to make up for the last couple missed days. It's also my first time using parchment paper on my wet palette. I didn't want to go through the whole process of using some of the Masterson's um, paper because you have to heat up the water and do all kinds of fun stuff. So we'll see how this parchment paper works on my wet palette. So I've got some oak brown out and I've got some of that hardened carapace so that I can mix it probably in like it's like a four parts oak brown to one part um, hardened carapace if it's even that much. Um, really just some of that green to take the edge off a little bit. So. Like I said, it's not a whole lot of difference there. Are you talking about the um, matte varnish as a replacement for liquid green stuff? I've I've seen matte varnish. It's worked fine for me. It's always it it works on smaller gaps. If you're getting into larger gaps, then you really need to go into pure green stuff and liquid green stuff. Like I said, it's just too hard for me to get a hold of. parchment paper. Um, yeah, I really like my Masterson's paper, but I was kind of in a rush tonight and didn't realize that I hadn't, that I let my wet palette dry out. And it wasn't because it was open or anything, I just haven't painted it in a week or in a few days. So. And I don't think I actually got the lid on all the way last time. I was kind of in a rush. But oh well. I really needed to change the paper out anyways. So 
So we're just putting that oak brown mixture here on the gallows. Making sure I get all the areas. Again, if I over touch in some areas, no big deal. I'll come back and clean it up a little bit later. I work from the inside out when I'm painting, so you know the the lowest levels will get their paint first. That way I can touch up the stuff that I overshoot on when I do later. I think for the pants, I have this dark stone color that I want to use for the pants on this guy. We're going to go back, we'll put another coat on those gallows once they dry here in a minute, but I can work on a different layer of something while waiting for that to dry. So I'm going to use dark stone for his pants. Like I said, I, I like my models for this game world to be very dark. So even when I say dark blue, we'll probably go with an army painter dark blue with some of that um, the necromancer cloak mixed, or the hardened carapace mixed in. So dark stone, again, one part to four parts. Just about. Yeah, this parchment paper is letting a lot more water through than I'm used to, but we, we can make it work. I haven't got my new army painter brushes in yet. They should be coming soon. When I spoke with them, they said they were on holiday, which in the U.S. I guess is vacation. Um, they were on holiday, and it would take a couple weeks to get them out to me. tell I'll be switching back to my Masterson's paper after this stream is over. Um, yeah, I use stainless steel agitators in my army painter paints, um, and they work fine for me, so I've got paints that have been sitting shelved with a stainless steel agitator in them for um, well over a year and a half and not had any issues with um, discoloring or anything like that. I know some people say that they have issues with them discoloring or you know what I've found is that a lot of people that have issues with them discoloring have bought cheap imported quote unquote stainless steel that claim they're stainless steel, but yeah. Make sure you're buying your stainless steel from a reputable company because there's very little product control in some of the stuff that comes in. And these are your paints. You want them to be the color that they should be when you pull them out of the pot. But if I get a... Let me find one of my colors that I've worked well. You can hear them in there. So like my black has one in there. But that bottle's almost empty, so I'll need to transfer it to a new pot. And what I do is I just pop them open when I open a new pot and I transfer the ball from the old colored or from the old pot to the new pot. Alright. Set him aside for a minute. And back to our gallows that we were working on.
course, layer's not quite dry everywhere, but it'll be fine. What projects are you working on, Sarah? use the same color that I used for his pants on his hat also. So for his base skin tone, I'm going to take, I'm trying to figure out which one of my two tan fleshes are open. I'm going to take tan flesh, but I'm going to mix in, like I said, a bit of that um, hardened carapace color so that it gives it a green, sickly green. And we'll probably end up highlighting them up all the way, way up to like a cobalt flesh color. Some of that neck on get some of that hardened carapace there. It's about the color that I want in my shadows as compared to this. It's still a flesh color, but almost like a sickly flesh color. Right now I'm just using a size zero brush. Again, I don't I'm not very steady handed to use a a size two. I know a lot of people do. More power to you. It just means I go to my palette more often. I can't do it. What you hear rattling as I turn it is my medicine bottle I'm using. I have a bunch of rocks in there just for some weight, for stability reasons when I set it down. Um, and those are my basing rocks also, so when I need one I can pop the bottle open. And I've got basing rocks right there. Or I use some of them on different miniatures. I don't. 
There's a mix of different ones in there. I'm making sure to thin my paints out a little bit just to be able to take advantage of that Zenithal highlighting that I applied. Um, if you're not going to use that with thinner paints, it is kind of pointless in doing. Although it can help you with visualizing where do your highlights go and things like that if you're going to start base coating with highlights, but I don't. I tend to put entire base coats on. We are going to work this guy mostly without a wash. That's another thing I've been doing with my Kingdom Death Monster Miniatures has been doing a lot of hand highlighting, blending, things like that. These are for my personal collection, so they'll get a little bit more attention than what I do on some of my commissions, just because the amount of time that it would take to paint something to this level would be really expensive for a lot of the army work that I do, where it's, you know, I'm painting a whole bunch of Star Wars Legion miniatures, or you know, I'm painting just swaths of armies for people for commissions. Um, now, if they want to pay me one off to to do their miniature to this level, I will. It's just, it, it's not going to be cheap. And I won't take a full army commission at this level. I've had people ask. It would just take way too much of a time investment. There's also this hand down here that's been removed from the body that he's got strapped onto his waist. So we'll get that, but we're going to make that, come back and make that some dead colors. Um, and he's got a hand holding onto his gallows as well, so we got to make sure we get that. We'll see, I may end up washing this guy. I think I did a light wash on another one. Um, I did the Percival miniature for Kingdom Death Monster. But I do want these to look nice because they are kind of show pieces. Um, when you're talking about a $400 board game, you push the miniatures as far as you can. So, all right, we're gonna go back to our pants. We're gonna give them a second coat now that they're mostly dry. This parchment paper is letting a lot more water through than I'm used to. I think I could work with it if I got used to it, but I'm used to it not. The Master Sense doesn't let as much water through. So it's really thinning out my paints a little further than I'm used to using them. Which is fine, Army Painter paints can be somewhat thick. if you don't shake them right. If I were doing any OSL on this character, you know, object source lighting, I would actually have gone almost 50-50 of the hardened carapace to the tan flesh for a base tone, and really used that to build up shadows, but I'm not doing OSL on this guy. Some of the, the, the miniatures that have lanterns I do OSL on for Kingdom Death Monster, and it really just makes them pop and stand out pretty on the board. Alright, let's do our blue real quick. So I've got this deep blue. Army painter deep blue. running out. I've used a lot of it on commissions. Luckily I got some more in the mail the other day. We'll get some more of this hardened carapace out. Carapace, carapace, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. 
laugh at me later if you want. Or now, whenever. We'll pull some of it over there. We're probably going to do a 1 to 3 on this one. About right there is where I want it. So that's the base color, and that's our color that we're going with for his clip. I may change it as soon as I get some paint on the miniature. That's right where I wanted it. A nice deep blue that I can bring up some of the upper highlights and do some limited highlighting work with later. Some limited contrast highlighting. We're still going to do a lot of layers of highlights, so it'll just not be as contrasting as other models. I, look, I did look at some pictures for some inspirations. Now I didn't. I'm not copying anyone's paintwork. Just to get some ideas. I don't like to copy other people's work. I'll use it for. Hey, you know what? I kind of like that color combination, and then I'll make it my own. So like there was one that was blue and brown, but it was a much lighter blue, almost like a denim blue. And the brown was a, a leather brown. And so I liked that idea, but it wasn't dark enough for what I'm going for on my paint schemes on this specific um, game. And I needed a break from painting Star Wars Legion. I love painting Star Wars Legion. I am a Star Wars fanboy through and through. But you can only paint so many Rebel Troopers before you're like, look. Or Storm Troopers before. You just have to say, I need to paint something else. Getting some detail work here.
come back and touch the zombie hand up. Well, I call it a zombie hand. Because I have to get paint up in there. Same thing with these pants. We may have to touch up an area. Because I'm not being super clean about how I'm painting it either. Beautiful. I like this blue a lot. And the green gives it just enough depth that we can work with some shadows later. And what we'll end up doing after we get all our base coat down is we'll end up blending in some shadows and highlights and things. Wet blending some and have fun with it. Alright, so back to our hat color and pants color. Hat needs one more coat because I've been putting it on fairly thin. Mostly due to the wet palette. I'm not used to it. And let's touch up any areas that I got some blue underneath here on his legs. All right. So we've got a couple things over here to paint. We need to get our ropes taken care of. So we're gonna go with skeleton bone. This will be our base for our ropes and our skeleton. Actually, no, it's just gonna be the base for our skeletons. Our ropes, we're gonna do base and dust yellow, and then we'll highlight up to skeleton bone. squeeze that a little bit more than I wanted to. And same thing, we're gonna go with some of that hardened carapace, and then about a two to one mix of, or not two to one, four to one mix of skeleton bone. Maybe less because since it's almost a white cream color, it, um, it thins out or it darkens up real easily. So we have some skulls on here. We're gonna get painted. These will take a couple coats for sure. Just because we're trying to paint white on two blacks and grays. Okay, and he's got a couple skulls on his body as well. So knee pads, namely. Yep. Same thing over here. First coat done there. He has a couple little satchels on his belt, and I'm going to use these for that as well. And right here on the end of the arm, there's a little bit of bone sticking out. So we're going to try to not do what I just did. Flood the area with some water to get our paint off. I'm going to grab a little bit finer brush for that area. I 
realized I missed something on his forehead. Back to our skeleton color. Second coat on some of these over on the gallows. Let that sit for a second while I do something. Just waiting for some paint to dry real quick while I look up a couple things. that need a bit of touch up with the blue. Okay, let's touch up the skin on the zombie hand. for the skull bone color to dry in a couple areas so we can put another coat on there. Touch up this little area of blue here. Touch up the little area of blue under the zombie hand. I think for the sword sheath, I'm gonna do that same brown color that I had for the gallows. I don't know why, I just made a gigantic pool of it. But, wasn't paying attention. Just trying to think and work at the same time. scabbard for the sword, sheath, whatever it's and then I need to make just a little bit more blue because when I was doing that I realized there was a spot under the sword that I missed.
We're still working on getting these base colors on, these base coats. Good night, I just made a boo boo. We'll fix it. Just double checking our skulls over here and make sure that they've got good coverage. Sometimes you have to put quite a few layers on of white or white like colors. Here's where we're at so far there. And here's where we're at on our manhunter so far. Getting there. So, dust yellow, which I'm almost out of and need to order more of. This is going to be our base tone for our rope. Same thing as before, mix in our necrotic or our hardened carapace color in about a 4 to 1 ratio, maybe 3 to 1. Kind of just eyeball it, whatever color you like it when it gets there, stop adding darker color. And I'm using a smaller brush for this because it's smaller areas. It's not that, you know, my, my size 2 Windsor and Newton right now that I use until I get my Army Painter stuff in has a the same fine tip that this brush has, but what I end up doing is that I shake that I end up touching stuff with the barrel of it, so the big fat part of it. So I could actually do the same level of line work. Um, sorry about that, I had an itch in the back. I could do the same level of line work, fine detail work with that size too, but I shake a little bit and the barrel ends up touching stuff that I don't want it to touch. So. This doesn't have that same barrel, which means it holds less paint, which means that I have to go back to my paint palette more often, but that's a trade-off you make. Let's get my finger on something. So whatever ends, whatever ends up working for you is what you do size-wise. This is just a Royal and Lang nickel that I picked up at the local craft store. I really like the point on it though, and how long the bristles are, that it's become one of my favorite detail brushes right now. Again, until I get my Army Painter brushes in here in the next couple weeks. I do want to take the opportunity to say to thank you to everyone that has made this YouTube channel what it is so far. Without you guys, I wouldn't have the motivation to do this. Um, I'm making zero dollars off of YouTube right now, so it's really just doing it to help people that are interested in painting learn how to paint. Just paint and ropes. I'm 
making colors as we need it. And as you get more practice painting, you'll get used to, hey, I want this to look like that color. How much paint do I add? I wish I could tell you there was a direct science of it. Because even saying, oh, like two to one, if you accidentally go like just a little bit less than two to one on when you're mixing, say, a white color, you're going to have a vastly different color than when if you went one to two or any other layer, or not layer, any other mix of paint whites especially because they are so easy to blend out the color when mixing. But we're getting there. I've been putting off painting this guy for a long time, not because I don't want to paint him, um, because I've been busy painting other people's stuff and I finally just had to break down and say, I've got to paint for me for a minute. Like I know I've painted some Bosques on stream for myself and some Sabines, but those are because I needed to paint a customer's model, so I went ahead and painted mine alongside of it, because it really doesn't take all that much time to paint two versus one. You're already getting the paint colors out, especially if you're doing the same paint schemes. This has been sitting in my project drawer next to my bench for a long time, just waiting for me to break down and say, I'm, I'm just going to paint it. So, this is for me. I've gotten everything out the door that I promised before Gen Con. So I'm going to take an opportunity to paint for myself. Alright, does he have any rope on him over here? Not that I see. All right, touch up an area on the gallows. in these eye sockets of this skeletons. I'm going to take my fine tip brush and I'm going to put some pure hardened carpus in there just to give them a little detail in case I don't end up washing. We may do some select washing where I just pick out certain areas with wash to give them some detail but not do like the mass washing that I do on most of my other miniatures where I just wash the whole the whole model. We'll see. You can even take army painter washes and paint with them directly on the primer and it takes a couple coats but they work if you provide a contrast layer to them beforehand like a zenithal highlight they work like as a, a, a glaze or something. Alright. I'm going to run that across the teeth as well. This is almost a glaze consistency that I've washed this down to. And we'll go back later and kind of touch up those areas to make them cleaner. His knee pads do need one more coat of the skeleton bone mixture that we had. They're not where I want them to be color-wise. And then I'll need to go under with our pants tone and touch up where I messed some things up. Round. 
thrown into his belt with this. And he has some, um, like a, a shoulder harness thing. We're also going to need to go back over in just a minute and give the, the rope a second layer. So mix up our leather brown color. He's got a belt and some pouches on it. Did I want to be this color? This is really thin, so it's going to take a couple of coats to work with. And we're going to do the hilt on his sword, that same color as well, as well as the straps holding it up. I should say the handle on his sword, not the hilt. Unless that's what it's called. I don't know. I'm not fancy. a couple things up with our blue which is fine which is also why like I've said on a couple other streams I typically wait until the end to do touch-ups because um, I could sit here and touch up to death so I'll paint my base coat and then come back at the end and touch up my base coat colors everywhere that there's leather strap looking stuff so on his boots he has these leather straps I'm gonna grab my finer brush for these are small straps and I am trying to minimize my amount of cleanup on this guy you know for other when I'm doing like I said batch painting armies I'm less careful because I can always come back and clean up later but this has a lot of custom color mixes in it so I'm wanting to try to be a little bit careful and minimize my amount of cleanup he's got this little bandolier that runs and holds some stakes of some sort. So just painting that bandolier. Again, try to be careful, but if you have to come back and touch up with that blue color, that's fine. I'm going to have to. Go back 
check over some of the leather spots that could use a second coat. I missed a little pouch on the back, so we'll get some of our skeleton bone color. We'll touch that in real quick. some leather on there since I'm already in that color we'll go ahead and touch it up right now some... I'm gonna go with a little bit more pure skeleton bone almost he has like a jewelry around his waist or his wrists that I want to be almost pearls like he stole them off of somebody he killed I'm going to use this color without any of the, um, the ne ne hardened carapace. Hardened carapace? Why do we? Anyways, any of the hardened carapace. He has a bandage on his hand over here that I'm going to make. I use the skeleton bone for bandage colors because it makes it look like a, d a dirty bandage. shot with my brush and got a little onto the wood. Easy fix. All right, into our rip color. And we're just going to touch up the large areas. Forget the leather on his hat. Oops. Fine tip brush and take your time. That's what I'm doing. On the areas where I'm worried about that are hard to get. blue here and touch up a couple spots.
get some of these closer areas along the skin. I'm not sure what happened there, but there's something dark on his chest. So. It's about time for our metallics here in a minute. On the metallics, so we're gonna do gunmetal. But as we have been with everything, we're gonna mix in just a touch of our. Um, Pardon Carapace. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time remembering it. It's not a color I use commonly. We just want to darken it a little bit. And then the handle up here, we're going to do brass. Oops, I'm out of, the, out of shot there. A hero with no praise or glory Just his cape and his cave and his meow. Use my fine tip brush to get into some of those. I really do try to be careful with my metallics, because they're harder to cover. And we're going to use this for all of the buckle colors also, so like he's got a buckle on his hat, a couple on his boots. Got little buttons on all these little bags. This is also going to be the color of our stakes.
This music sounds very Final Fantasy-esque. I'm using pretzel.rocks for my streaming music. It's a free, royalty-free streamer. And I've got it set to the Epic Station. a spot here. Same thing in our blue. When I did this bag, it bled everywhere for some reason. My water was paint was way watered down. So, let's go fix all that. And paint inside here for when we attach the arm in case it doesn't cover all the way. All right. Weapon bronze. Same thing as before, into our hardened carapace. Yay, I remembered that time. I do like mixing in non-metallic paints with my metallics frequently, as it kind of knocks down the shine a little bit, but it doesn't completely remove the effect that you get from true metallics. I personally, I know that's a real popular method and it's kind of a, almost one of those, if you can really paint, you can paint. TMM, or um, NMM, non-metallic metals, but I don't like the effect. It does take a crap ton of skill to do, I'm not knocking anybody's skill level that can do that. I have done it on other miniatures. I don't like the effect. It feels cartoony to me. Even when I've seen it done really well, like world-class painters that have won much larger awards than I've, I've ever won or dream of winning. Just not my preference of paint style. If you're watching, glad to have you. Thanks for popping on in. We are painting a model from the Kingdom Death Monster board game world called Manhunter. He's one of the expansion models. Or 
are getting close to being done with our base coat. And we're putting on our metallics now. If you're watching, feel free to comment in the chat. Let me know you're here. We'd love to talk with you. Hope you're having a good Saturday evening, night, wherever you are. We won't get this guy done tonight on stream. We'll have to do a part two. Maybe finish him up tomorrow night. Into our leather color here, touch up a area that I over metallic. Back into our sheath color here, and touch up a couple of blemishes. Nothing major. Just a couple boo boos. All right. Here's our base coated manhunter. If I can get him in frame. In. I'm deciding if I want to do the wash route or how I want to go about doing this. Touch up some skin around his shoulder here. Wherever shot with blue. Decisions, decisions. I think I'll end up washing the metallics and then we'll hand paint everything else. That's what I think we'll end up doing. I won't, 
I'm going to wash everything except the skin tone, actually, is what's going to happen. Um, and it's just going to get a pure black wash across the board. Because I don't want the wash on the skin. So that's what we're going to do. But we're going to thin it down just a touch, just a smidge. So we've thinned out our black wash. We'll start here. The is issue with the way that this is mounted on this base and washing it is that it really needs to sit like that. So it makes so that the wash flows to the right areas on the gallows. is going to make this easier. As much as I wanted to do a lot of brushwork on it, the wash is going to take care of a lot of that for me. So, get this set off the way it should be somehow. I wish I had some blue tack handy. I don't. So, get creative. There we go. brush and wash there are some very talented art artists out there painting kingdom kingdom death monster miniatures and man they're amazing choice to wash. If I do wash the flesh, we might do it with like a, a greenish. Really bring out some of those green shadows. And I should have probably mixed a little green into this. Oh well. A little too late now. Just be real careful to make sure it doesn't pool in places where you don't want it on this one if you're going for a higher quality paint job. Make sure you clean your brush off and clean off some of those pools.
or even black washing the skin. It'll really give it some deep shadows. We can bring him back out again. I wasn't sure about doing it, but here we are. Just make sure on the skin you really take care of any pooling that you don't want to be in certain places. Again, this is a army painter dark tone that has been thinned out to probably a almost a two to one ratio of dark tone to water. So here's what it looks like washed. And he's drying. So I think that's where we're going to call it for tonight. What we'll do is we'll come back tomorrow. We will finish up this guy tomorrow with a part two and let that wash dry and cure really well overnight. And tomorrow night we will put highlights on and all that other fun stuff. So thanks for joining me tonight. Um, appreciate you stopping by. Feel free to stop on by, subscribe and glad that you were able to be a part of this with us. Have a good night, everyone.